Today's episode brought to you by Usual Wine, the modern drinker's wine made right here in California with zero additive and zero sugar. Get $8 off your first glass today with code BEAUTIFUL. Usual wines are for the modern drinker. Are you caveman? Not for you. Are you contemporary man or woman? Here is your wine. Each bottle 6.3 ounce heavy pour or about glass and half of wine. No more pouring wine down the sink when you don't want to finish because single serve format and bottle design usually is always fresh. No more flat bubbly or stale rosé. These wines are very low carbohydrate. They have like zero grams of sugar. And usual has a red blend, a rosé, and even sparkling white wine called Brut. We also have usual spritz, low alcohol 8.5% ABV, low calorie wine spritzer that's made of sparkling wine and guava juice. Oh my god, so delicious. It's like white claw, but for grown up. Each serving, you cannot believe, only 83 calorie. Wow. On nights when I make special borscht recipe for one, I love that usual wine makes single serving containers. I enjoy wine with my borscht and I don't have to worry about big bottle going stale in the fridge. It's wine for modern time, for modern people, like me. Other thing to know about, wait a minute, but don't grape contain sugar? To clarify, all usual wine are produced using natural sustainable grapes, harvested every fall. These grapes picked at optimal ripeness to ensure all sugar will be fermented completely until wines are dry, with no residual sugar. All left over, delicious clean wine. Wow, you drink now. Please, if you don't mind, Go check out the website at www.usualwines.com and use my discount code BEAUTIFUL for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Thank you. All right, welcome back to The Bald and the Beautiful. I am here by myself today as a host. It is me, Trixie Mattel, and I am here for a very special Mother's Day edition. And I have my real life mom, Valerie here. Hello. Hello. We have my real life mom here. What's the tea, mom? What's up? Not much. Nice weekend. Great. That's the whole episode. Well, Bye. Nice weekend. I'm glad to be. Um, I'm working full time Monday through Friday now, so my schedule's changed. I love the weekends, but they're so busy. I think people need to hear like post COVID. I think people need to hear about people who actually have had a good year. And you have kind of come out of COVID with like best job you probably ever had best money right well and you know i've got the you know i did get i did get covid you know and that's end of just, right the end of the 2020 in december i had covid isn't that crazy i was very sick it was scary um but i came out of it okay and i did that trial medication in the hospital in the er and it worked i was surprised it worked i mean i wasn't surprised it worked but how well it worked um when covid started i remember them talking about the type of people that were super high risk that it they could kill you and you were like the exact person that it would kill oh yeah it was scary i worked from home for a while but it just got to the point that i couldn't really work from home anymore it had been months you know and it was just time to get back and plus i felt i was letting my team down and my job so i went then i got then when i was scheduled to go back i was back for a little you know i was working and a month later i got the virus. So, but I got through that and then I made the move down here because of the house you bought for us. Yes. Yes. The awesome home. I love it. I'm very happy. She there. was previously on the streets before that, <laughs> <laughs> but I was living alone. So I'm now I'm with my family. So it's, it's really nice. It's, um, so you live in Milwaukee now you grew up in Milwaukee, right? Yes. Does it weird to feel like you live here again? It is. I haven't lived here for 32 years. That's crazy. I mean, I've visited here, but I haven't lived here. Um, so it's it's nice to be back. It is. It's nice to um, learn the city. I'm still learning my way around the city, but it's great. I like it a lot. Um, like I said, but once again, bringing together with the family is like the best. Do you want to tell everybody what the marijuana experience you had today? I'm sure they like it. They, sure. People are like, sure. I, people like your vibe. When you did the video, if you guys haven't seen the video of me putting my mom in drag, all the comments were like, "Oh my god, I love that your mom's just a chill, a chill lady who has like stories about smoking weed." Well, I got some edibles, and I was told only to some edible cookies. They were just tiny things, and I was told only to eat half, and I had half, and didn't seem to do anything. So I ate the other half. How long and- did you wait? About a half hour. Mom. 
even know you can't wait a half hour. And then it was like it was on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you waited 30 minutes. By the way, my mom is somebody who's probably been experimenting with marijuana since what, you were a teenager? Yes. And you thought it was okay to wait 30 minutes and then go, nah, that's not enough. Well, edibles, edibles, smoking and edibles are different time frames and it's just, it's different and the high is even different, so. That's what I mean. You should know that. You should wait no, like I just listen. started edibles like the past year. Oh, really? Yes. So you never really did any edibles regularly? No. That's so funny because I, I mean, I'm 31. I never got into smoking weed. I never wanted to. But edibles were so great because to me, it was like, A, better for me than drinking. Right. And B, the worst thing I'm going to do to myself on edibles is like snack a lot and fall asleep. Like that's it. Yeah. So edibles are kind of a new thing for me. Um, do you get hungry? Yes, I get the munchies. I, may, I, will, I will say I've smoked weed a couple times. I think edibles make me so much hungrier. I had cake. Oh, your birthday cake. Yes. <laughs> was it amazing? It was. Because I didn't have no cake. I had cake last night before I went to bed because I didn't try it. And everybody was telling us how good it was. It was good. And it was even extra good today. Um, yeah, so I had a bunch of cake. I had some pretzels and dip. Sometimes I just was- had the munchies. And then I fell asleep on the couch. Wait, have you ever had a bad edibles experience? No. Really? No. You never been like too much, too fast? Because I feel like you have to wait a full 90 minutes to oh, really know I, what's going on. I was like super duper high today all day. Well, we got them from, you got them from a family member of ours. Yes. Because in Wisconsin, it's not legal, which by the way, for people like my mom who are chronic pain sufferers, give up the ghost. Let people have the edible I think marijuana it's on at least. The, like, on the agenda for the state. I mean, people here drink. I mean, I own a bar here. I'm not, I'm, everybody knows I like to drink. I'm not trashing drinking, but like the way people drink here, not policed at all. I mean, no one cares. But edibles, which basically have like, nothing's going to happen to you, but they act like it's crack heroin, like yeah. a hardcore this street drug. so conservative. Yeah, don't you think? Because when we lived up north, where would you get marijuana up north? Michigan? You, you really, they, too many people were going to Michigan. They closed down the shops around the, uh-uh. around, because that were around the Wisconsin border, like up in the UP. They had shops where you go get edibles and then they closed them down because there was too much going on. So. Oh, so you would be able to get them. Is it legal to buy it in Michigan and do it in Michigan? Yeah, it's legal there. But it's not legal to like drive it home to your house and like no. eat it later. That is so crazy. And not to mention, you, my mom has, what kind, of, what kind of chronic pain do you live with? I have a lot of pain. I have back pain. I have knee pain. I have osteoarthritis. I have. Does your face hurt? Osteoarthritis. No, I don't <laughs> fall for that joke. <laughs> I mean, really, like imagine how much your life would be so much easier if you had that stuff accessible to you. And, yeah, and dosed out day, in the way you want. Well, and even at the end of the workday, you know, it's 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 nice to, you know, just like I said, but the smoking and the eating is different because you smoke, you get that instant eating. You have to wait a while. Well, that's what's hard about eating it is when, when it comes like on said, strong, the dosage, yeah. when you when it comes on too strong when you're eating it and it's just the beginning of it, you go, oh, shit, this is about to get worse, too. And that you can't go into it today. I mean, I was that bad. It was just, I was wasted. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like ruin my, I, I've never done it the day to be honest, because it never, I can't believe you're here talking right now. I would be sleeping for eight hours. Oh no. And you know, that's what I, t- I told your auntie. I says, you know, I says, I'm sorry. I was really wrecked early. I couldn't help you with much of anything. Cause she wanted me to go to Menards. I'm like, I just can't. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> and so, um, she says, well, now you know. I said, yep. I said, that's so high, and I'm going to try to Brian's. <laughs> Would you identify as a hippy-dippy person? No, I'm not really like that, neither. I'm just laid back, you know? I think that's just the, you know? But don't you think that's the ultimate, actual hippy energy? Being laid back? Yes. Yeah. Well, everybody should be laid back. You can't, uh, you can't always fix what's coming or know what's coming. The past is behind you. Today is today. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, well, this is a Mother's Day special. Did you always want to be a mom? I did. Really? I did. How, what's your, your like earliest memory of wanting to be a mom? 
these were my goals in life when I was little. Okay. <laughs> First, I wanted to be Miss America. <laughs> Easy, attainable. And then, and then I wanted to be, um, then I wanted to be a wife and a mother. Well, you got half half of those. Well, I get to be a wife for a while too. So. I'm talking about Miss America. Oh. <laughs> Unless you have this Miss America career I don't know about. Oh, yeah. I didn't get that. <laughs> have you ever been to a real beauty pageant? No. It's cr- it's really crazy what these people go through. I can only imagine. I've, I've seen a little bit on those tiny tots or tots beauty shows. Unless you win. Unless you win like Miss America. There's not like a career. There's not like a huge cash bonus for fifth place. Right. right. You know what I mean? You have to basically win. And then you have to basically be a nun forever or they strip you of your title oh i didn't know that oh yeah like if you were miss america oh i would have never i would they would have stripped my title (laughs) immediately if i became miss america i like seriously if you were miss america and you were like pregnant before marriage people be like oh these women get treated pretty bad that way yeah i couldn't have been miss america because i would have blown all the protocols before i even became 18 when you found out you were pregnant for the first time did you flip out i was nervous to tell my parents. Well, yeah. Which is funny because I love grandma and grandpa. Rest in peace. Love them both. Grandma had a baby at 16. I know. So who, who could she judge, right? All she said was, it's about time. I'm like, I was like totally confused. What did you think? I mean, was your gut in knots telling her? I told her on the phone. Fear. Yeah. <laughs> Protection. Yeah, they were up north and I was in Milwaukee at the time yet, so. I didn't tell your grandpa. Your grandma told him. Too scared. Yep. But it all it all worked out. Yeah, especially since grandma and grandpa were kind of obsessed with being grandparents. So yeah, and they were. Don't great you think they were also too. really obsessed with Dan? Yes, because he was my brother, my older brother. Everybody, he was listening. the first grandchild, and he was a little boy. Right. And your grandma always wanted boys. I mean, she loved us, but you know. She always wanted a boy, and she well, got, she got one. Well, she got one, right? But and auntie's bonus, kind of yeah. Oh, a bonus for another one. <laughs> yeah, so grandchild that was a boy. Gosh, the first one, the first grandchild, and then yeah, they were kind of, but they they were good with everyone. I think you know. I think you're right. They were probably a little more obsessed with Dan because he was the first one. Right, but that's what I mean. Did you think like? When you, because I mean, spoiler alert, everybody on the pod probably knows, but my sister's seven months pregnant now. You're going to be a grandma for the first time. I'm excited. And it it is truly about time. Did you flip out? When she told me? Yeah. No, I (laughs) wanted her to be. I'm going for drama here, mom. I'm like, did you flip out? You're like, no. No, I didn't flip out because it's, it was bound to happen. Yeah. So. I just wanted her to be more, be maybe more secure in a career before she made this move. But then again, it's her life. Yeah. I, I mean, not say I don't care because I do. You know, I'm being involved. And um, <clears throat> but for all of you know my children, it's their life, their path. I can't. I learned a while ago. I can't choose those. I just have to stand behind them. Or, yeah, and try to and try to give them try try to cap out, cash. Oh, is this travel the path with them? Exactly. <laughs> Travel the path with them. Okay. Quick question: Who's your favorite? Son, who's your favorite child? My oldest son asked me that too, not too long ago. Did he really? Yes. <laughs> what did he say? I said, "I love you all. There is no favorite." He says, "Who's your smartest child?" <laughs> our, 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 I have two younger sisters, Samantha and Desiree. Those are your youngest kids. Yes. It's weird because you had like two two children. And then waited a while, and they had like another batch of like an older and younger child. Right. Are Samantha and Desiree, did they fight as much as me and Dan did? Yes, they did. Really? And even even now, they're not they're not best pals. They can't be together for an extended period of time because yeah. they start getting, you know, catty with each other. They just don't get along after a while because their personalities are so different. That's why. Yeah. And same with you and Dan. You guys' personalities are way different. I love my brother. I don't think you could have produced a more, in some ways, incompatible sibling for me. Right, right. N- not a single shared interest. Well, you know, there was a lot of drama when you came along, too, because then Ashley came along right after you. My cousin. 
Yeah, and for a little kid, he's no longer the center of attention. There's more babies, and he didn't like that, I'm sure, you know, but... Yeah. They kept coming, so... <laughs> I mean, he's funny because he's, like, um, he's kind of like Superman as far as, like, super achiever. He is, he is. If you guys don't know at home, my brother's, like... How many times did he go to Kuwait and Iraq? Like three times? No. He was back and forth, yeah, but he served four years in the service and most of the time was over in yeah. Afghanistan and Iraq. And now he's an attorney with his own it's practice. a criminal defense attorney, yeah. Crazy. I mean, he truly is kind of like Superman. Well, he he's, he's likes to you know do well. Well, same with you. Look at you. You work all the time. But you, you know, know what's you... funny? The only thing that we have in common is work ethic. Right. But yes. we also couldn't work in more separate fields. Although, you know what? I don't think we could work together neither because you both want to take the lead. And Yeah. No, he, he, you know what, though? I do bother him sometimes about like contracts because he's obviously really good. Right. He's, he doesn't do entertainment his, law, yeah. but like he really understands the verbiage of those contracts are written crazy. Right. Right. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Everything is like, whereas unto the it's like all kind. it's like, why are we writing like that? But. Okay, I have a question. When did you, uh, do you have any memory, when did you think I was going to be a performer, maybe? Oh, when you were young, you were young. You always loved singing. And remember when you had the mullet, people loved. Oh, yeah, why don't you tell people about the mullet? <clears throat> well, <laughs> your hair was so pretty and soft and it grew long. You hear that? So, I used to have soft hair that grew long. And it naturally spiked on the top of his head. If I kept it a certain length, it didn't, it was long length, it spiked and it was long in the back. And of course he had a mullet and people would give him money to touch his hair <laughs> <laughs> when he was little and he put it in the coin machine. So, so did you let the hair in the back grow? Yeah. And then someday you had to eventually cut it. Right. Right. But you just didn't want to cut it. No, I just, I liked it long. Did Dan have a mullet? No. Just me. Just you. Why? <laughs> Cause I liked your hair that way. <laughs> When you did the um, the talent show and you won, and then you did the local... Uh, oh, yeah. Tell them that story. About the talent show? Yeah. So it, it was uh, a school talent show, right? Right. Elementary or fifth grade. And I was not in fifth grade. Not fifth grade. I was no, in kindergarten. 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 I was I'm five. I'm thinking 5K. I'm thinking 5K. Yes. You were in kindergarten and your teacher practiced to practice with you. Your grandpa practiced with you and... You did the talent show, you sang My Girl by the Temptations, and you won first place. Isn't that crazy? And then the local news, they got wind of it, and they were there for a Miss Teen Northeast Wisconsin beauty contest. Yeah. I was to one. I remember you asked if I was to oh, one. Oh, yeah. I was to one. And you were um, performed in it. You sang My Girl in the, as a performance. I'll never forget when I won the, the, I won the talent show, I won $20. Literally $20, yeah. which at the time I could, I couldn't even like conceive of that money, you know? And then we had to go do the Northeast Wisconsin, like Miss, is it Miss Northeast Wisconsin? Uh, Miss Teen, I think. Or maybe it was Miss Northeast Wisconsin. Miss Teen. Yeah, because the girls were young adults. Yeah. yeah. They were like high school age, Yeah, I think. And they're, they're doing this uh, in the gym. It's set up like a, like a real pageant, right? right. Yep. Midwestern. It's like full drop dead gorgeous, like a Midwestern teen beauty pageant. And then we had to go pick out a suit. Do you remember I had a suit? A tux, yes. A tux. A child, a five-year-old in a tux with tails. Yes. And we had to go rent that. I think they, they paid for the rental. They did. And then we had to, and I remember I had to sing My Girl with all these like teenage women like posing around me. I wish there was a video of it. It's probably so corny. You might be able to find it. Oh, it was that Channel 11. I don't remember what channel it was. In archives of there, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I probably have to die for them to come up with that. But, uh, yeah, that was. And then years later, when you were in high school and you were prom king. Oh, yeah. You got them to choose your little sister for the oh, mini yeah. queen. I forgot I still about got that. a picture of that. I have a framed picture of her. And that I don't remember the little boy's name, but... And I still have the um, the newspaper article where it's showing the court. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, she was such a pretty little girl, wasn't she? Yeah. She's, I mean, I even tell her, so that's my choice. You should let Brian do makeup for you once. I says, you're a beautiful girl. So. Uh, yeah, she kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say that our our 
our lineage is the hottest people anyone's ever seen. But no. she definitely got like the best of everything. She I think. got beautiful eyes and everything. She's a little chubby, yeah, but <laughs> she is. Um, she, she's gonna <laughs> she's not gonna listen to this. Actually, the other day I go, which one of my videos is your favorite? And she was like, I don't watch them. She was on the channel going, I've never seen your videos. Actually, I think she saw me put you in drag. That's it. Okay, you know what we should tell people what? about? Okay, people have seen me put you in drag on my YouTube channel, which you yes. guys haven't seen. Um, we should tell people about the the night we had. We we finished getting you in drag. Yes. Mom got a mom sitting there in makeup on the couch, and I'm like, we should go out later. And I'm I'm like, I was in drag still. Yeah, and how many shots were we in? Two hours? Because you were doing a photo uh, shoot after. I had a photo shoot that day, didn't yes. I? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we had um. We had shots, middle of the day. I think we're probably done by 2 p.m. And I'm like, we should go out later. And so we did. So mom takes a nap on the couch with the full Trixie makeup on <laughs> and no other drag. And she's sleeping with just my makeup on. And then we get in drag. We go to Hamburger Mary's West Hollywood. Yes. We sit in a booth and order drinks and food. And what did it feel like to be in drag out in the world like It was that? so much fun. And then... You let them know that it had been my birthday the previous week. Oh, yeah. And I had to go up. They called me out. I had to go up on stage with three other women. Uh Uh-huh. Remember that? How could I forget? You (laughs) danced. Right. And I won the prize. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was like a. It was like a. I had to shake my booty. Yeah. You had to shake your butt on stage. Yes. You weren't scared. No. I was in drag. I was having fun. I was just. I was mortified. but but, (laughs) But you weren't nervous at all. No, I was having a lot of fun. Did you feel like a totally different person in drag? Yes, I did, kind of. I mean, no, I would, you know, of course, inside you still, if you, you're you, but you don't have to. Nobody's going to ever see me like this ever again. These people I meet are never, ever going to see me again. And it also gives you some confidence, you know? You yeah. feel, you know, you're, you're dressed up, you know, you got all this makeup on. And did just, you feel beautiful? Yes, yes. Remember that wig? That wig was tr- struggling oh, all I kept, night. Yeah, it kept sliding off later in the night. You know why, honestly? Because I am not used to having to put real have real hair under a wig. Well, it's fine that we had that <laughs> headband that I could, we could kind of keep there. Right. And then um, you took me back to the dressing room. I got to meet all the ladies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were so nice. Everybody was just so very nice. <gasps> and even at Amber Mary's, they were. Do you remember what happened when we tried to leave the club? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank God you were there to save me. <laughs> okay, we, we gotta take a break, but you guys are gonna die when you hear this. <laughs> I want to talk to you about forbidden pleasures of the flesh. <laughs> Just kidding. I want to talk to you about something that's even more important. Squarespace. Yes, that's right, baby. Squarespace is an incredible digital phenomenon, international in scope, intergalactic in utility. Squarespace's suite of products combine award-winning design and world-class engineering. Oh, that's right. From their beautiful templates to their powerful e-commerce tools, Squarespace helps customers launch their ideas into the world and into the stratosphere. In the incredible construction of their personal brand domains websites online stores marketing tools analytics they've got it all the squarespace experience is comprehensive vast and extremely affordable whether you're just getting started or an established brand squarespace has all the powerful e-commerce platform designs to help your business grow like the dickens <laughs> Ah, marketing tools have never been easier. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo. So your messaging is what? Consistent and effective. (laughs) Analytics, you say? Well, let me tell you. Gain powerful insights about your site visitors and how they interact with your content with Squarespace's in-depth website analytics tools. Oh, baby, I can't even begin to tell you how much I love Squarespace. I have bought several domains, tens of domains. In fact, they're so cheap and easy to buy. I have TammyAngel.net, TammyAngelXXX.com, 
where is Tammy Angel dot biz? The list grows and grows and goes and goes. Squarespace has got me covered. <laughs> Head to squarespace.com slash bald for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code bald to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash bald. Hey guys, what's up? If there's ever been a year to make the moms in your life feel loved and appreciated on Mother's Day, this is the one. You know, I think about my ma, she's, you know, she's a trooper, you know, a psychiatric nurse. She's seen it all. She's been through the woods, down the block and around the corner, you know, and she's always been there for me. She's, she's uh, stuck it out. You know, she ain't no interloper, you know, she's uh, in for the long haul. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm honoring my mom with a heartfelt sentimental gift that the whole family can really cherish together forever. Starry Worth. Starry Worth is an online service that helps your ma, grandma, mother-in-law, and every mother figure in your life share stories through thought-provoking questions about their memories and personal thoughts. It's a fun new way to engage with them, especially if you can't be together in person. Every week, Starry Worth emails your ma with a different story prompt, questions that you never thought to ask, like, hey, what's some of the best advice your mother ever gave you? Personally, I'll never forget the day my ma said to me, you know what, kid? Spandex is a right, not a privilege. Whoa, some deep shit there. Starryworth has helped numerous families learn about each other in profound, special ways. You know, testimonials practically moved me to tears. I'll never forget reading these testimonials in my living room with my ma, just crying, crying, really emotional expression. It brought us together in a really deep way. We've never been the same, thanks to Starryworth. There's no shortage of surprises when reading the weekly stories, and they make your family feel close, even if you're not together. You know, whether you're on Zoom, whether you're on over the email, or whether you're you know, on the telephone, it really just deepens your relationship. Can't put a price tag on that. Thank you, Starryworth. After one year, Starryworth will compile all your ma's stories, including photos, and a beautiful keepsake book that's shipped for free. Wait a minute, what? It doesn't cost $50? Nah. Give your mom the most meaningful gift this Mother's Day with Starryworth. Get started right away with no shipping required by going to starryworth.com slash bald. You'll get $10 off your first purchase. That's starryworth.com slash bald for $10 off. S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash bald. And we're back. So we're standing outside the club. We're waiting for the Uber. Tell them what happened. <laughs> <laughs> very short older man came over to me put his arm around me and start hitting on me because he thought you were a man in a dress yes <laughs> so you guys my mom's standing there in if you're like a, a, a whatever if you've ever seen this outfit i have it's like a peach squirrel suit yeah right? like a patrick star <laughs> yes kind of with like a headband my mom's outside and my mom you're short yeah how well, he is was he shorter than me how well i guess that's why maybe he th I'm, I'm thinking to myself how could he have thought you were a man because you're like five two well but he was i had no i had flat shoes on because i couldn't i didn't have no heels with me that's right but he was shorter than me you wouldn't have made it in a heel and no i wouldn't have and then thank god you, you were there to save me you kept trying to tell him, this is a woman. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're standing there. I, I mean, we've also had drinks. So my mom's being, I think, I think for how creepy he was being, you were being extremely nice. Well, I was. I was just telling you. could have slapped him. not interested. Yeah. Because he didn't just come up and talk to you. No, he put his arm around me. He put his arm around you. Yeah, around your waist. And yeah. you're like, no, no, no. And, and then I'm going, that's a woman. That's a woman. I just think it's funny. Can I just say this? And you this? put your arm around me too. <laughs> yes, I tried to save you, but I just think it's funny that I, you know, six five in drag, gore, like clearly a man. He went straight to you. He went straight to. <laughs> Maybe he was drunk. The woman of a certain age who is an, obviously a woman. You looked like a drag queen, but you obviously looked like a woman to me. Well, that's because I'm your mother. <laughs> that's true. It was so crazy. Then we got in the car and you ripped that wig off yes, immediately. Yeah, couldn't take it anymore because it was crazy. And I think we got home. I don't remember if we ate. I think we got food. No, we didn't. And the hangover the next day was, it was fierce. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Horrible. I still have like, I have, <laughs> I have videos of you laid out on the laid out on the bed with oh, the makeup still on, sleeping, <laughs> sleeping. That was rough. I mean, I, I want to ask you a question. I don't think I've ever asked you. I I think that. Moms like you don't get enough credit where like when I told you I was gay, you couldn't have cared less. You were like, so what? No big deal. 
Well, I, I kind of knew. I mean, I, I was but, waiting for you to, I, you know, I wasn't going to call you up and say, hey, are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you had. I probably, honestly, I, I don't know how you I would have handled that. I probably uh, started crying. <laughs> I probably just started crying. But how come it's so easy for, don't you think as a mom, how do you think people turn out so, turn on their children like that? I don't know. I don't really know because um, you you know you see it all the time. You know, they say, you know your children are who they are. You, they can't you know make the choice of you know who they want to be. Your children are who they are. No. And you know, I you know, I I raised you. I know. I you know. You also didn't like raise me gay. No, I actually. I was you, a... wanted, you wanted Barbies. I wouldn't give you Barbies. You wanted this. You want that. I wouldn't do that. Right. Your grandma did, but um, <laughs> you know what though? I mean, but we're... At, not, in the long run, it doesn't matter because you were going to be who, who you're going to be no matter what. I honestly think, looking back, you didn't want me to have Barbies because I mean, I had such an obsession with Barbie forever. You didn't want me to have Barbies, I think, because I think you knew the type of attention it would put on me, like at school or. I mean, a little boy with a Barbie is inviting, in a yeah. is inviting yeah. bullying. Or I mean, my brother wasn't even that nice to me about it. No, he wasn't. <laughs> and you know, I'm then living in a small town, and I'll say this though, I'm sure Dan doesn't listen to this. My older brother, he on paper is all the things that is supposed to make somebody really homophobic. Yeah, and he isn't. No, he's not. I think, I think it took him a little time. Well, I think like. Auntie, our aunt, my mom's sister is, I mean, that's probably why you were so accepting. Obviously, your little sister was gay. Right, right. When did you think Auntie was gay? Well, I, I, I should have known a long time when we were kids yet. What was the 70s? Did people even know what gay was, right? I mean. Yeah, but I kind of knew, like, there was certain, like, why is she always hanging out by this girl? Why is she acting like that, you know? Especially when we're getting our, you know, tweens and stuff. But, you know, that's Okay. And I don't know when I knew. I just, well, you know, she dated men for a while. And then she moved in. She dated a woman. She dated men back and forth. So I don't know if there was a time when I actually knew or not. But she, honestly, even if you didn't have a gay sister, I, you're compassionate enough. I, you would have been accepting of that even if she wasn't in your life, I think. If I turned out gay and auntie wasn't in your life first. Yeah, I think I would have been fine with it because I do too. And part of it is, I think my parents how they brought me up as well. You know, they're accepting. You know, my mom always used to say, "No kid, you know, asks to be brought in this world." So that's why she was loving to everyone. You know, because you know, everybody was a kid once, and they wanted. You know, nobody has to be brought here. They yeah, were brought into the world by you know, by people like me. And <laughs> yeah, but. I guess I wouldn't, um, I wasn't surprised and it doesn't bother me, you know. I guess I, I just have such a hard time understanding. Maybe I have a hard time understanding because, like I said, my family, nobody really ever made me feel like. Where they don't accept, where families don't accept. Right, people that never happened to me. Right. Especially since my auntie was in my life. I knew that auntie being around, I wasn't going to come out as gay and everyone was going to say no. Right. I honestly think I drummed it up to be something so much worse and then it was nothing. I think, yeah, I think it you was were more nothing. worried about it than it actually turned out to be. Because I think you were in shock when I said, yeah, when you called me and you told me. I was driving to work. I'm, yeah, I kind of knew, you know. Yeah. I actually think looking back, I I think I should have given you more credit. I shouldn't have got so afraid when like you've never, you would have never given me one reason to believe it wouldn't have gone perfect by saying it. Well. But, I think I could have told you sooner. But maybe it was also too, just so much, there was so much going on where you know, men and women who were coming out were getting so much, you know, slap back from their families that, you know, you were it was concerned. Different. It was a little bit pre the internet. Right. I mean, not, not I'm not pre the internet, but like now kids are like gay in high school. Right. Gay or, in middle you know, school. Or bisexual or whatever. You know, it's different now. It's more accepted. I it's also not called, totally accepted everywhere, but here it is, you know. I also called and told you I was gay because I had my first boyfriend. And oh, that's, that's what kind of pushed it too, yeah. That's the other weird thing is like, I think straight kids have, you have your first boyfriend in middle school, you talk to your mom about safe sex or whatever. You have all these milestones. But for me, my first boyfriend was in college. So then it's like, and I not only am going to come out, but I'm also having my first well, boyfriend. Well, prom king. 
You took a be- you know. I took a, oh, you had a beautiful, beautiful date. Girl. Yes, you had a gorgeous girl. Yeah. From beautiful. another school, even, I think. Yeah, this girl from another school. She was a catalog model. She was, yeah, gorgeous. So gorgeous pretty. Girl, yeah. Yeah, she was really, really great. I don't know. I just think back and I'm like, you really drummed it up for no reason. I could have given you a lot more credit, I think, because it was no big deal. Well, I no. called Auntie first crying. <laughs> I was like, ah. and Auntie goes, Brian, she knows. I'm sure she knows. <laughs> but you know, you think it's like this secret that you nobody knows well, about. Well, your but... auntie's like total anti drama. She's not, you know. Well, you know, people say, "Is it being gay? Is it nature or nurture?" I came out. I was a gay child. I think you were. Yes. I mean, I liked pink stuff, glitter, right? My from Little Pony Barbies. Yeah, from very young age. You I never, liked to wear. You never were in. Yeah, you. I like to wear with, girl clothes. You played with trucks and stuff a little bit, but that was more outside, like in the dirt, building things with your cousin. You know, like. Filling it with dirt and running it and dumping the dirt. Yeah. You know, anybody, any little kid likes to do that sort of stuff. So, I mean, yeah. you weren't real fond of the racetracks and all that stuff. No, you weren't. And I hated fishing. Yes. And I still do. I don't like fishing either. I don't Some either. Some people love it. And it's, that's great that they, they, they find a passion for it, but. You know what else? You don't, you don't like camping either, do you? No, I don't. Me neither. I don't mind, like, this summer I might go camping with... Your auntie and, you know, Franny and her family, but she's got a pop-up camper that's got, you know, heat if we need it. It plugs in as electric. It's you glamping. Know? Yeah, because, you know, I can't, I just, I'm not into camping. I lived. Are you trying to sleep on the floor? No. No. And I lived in the North Northwoods, you know, where walking in my backyard was better than camping, you know? Th- that's what's so funny. Remember when I was a Boy Scout for a long time, remember? Yeah. A long time. Probably till I was like 14. Yeah, you were Boy Scout for quite some time. And we would go to Boy Scout camps. Yeah. And those Boy Scout camps would be closer to big cities than where we lived. Yep. With like more amenities, like air conditioning. And, yeah. and I'm like, this is not camping. <laughs> At my house in the summer, I remember, remember grilling almost every day. Yeah. Because we had a wood stove. And in the summer, you don't want to cook inside. Nope. Nope. You don't want to cook inside at all. We had grills and even. You really turned it out food wise. I thought everybody's mom can cook. That is not the truth. No, everybody can't cook. And you know, but it was. You cooked like I a salad, day. a side, an entree, a dessert, like every, it was like a full meal every day. I mean, say, I wouldn't say every day, but most days, yeah, I did. Well, don't you think when you were married to, you were more like, well, we're cooking for more people. Well, right. Well, for a while there was cooking for six of us. That was, cr- I mean, I did dishes for six. I know. It was horrible. That was one thing that I hate to say it. I love that you and Dan did the dishes. I always made a deal with you guys. I'll do them one day a week. You guys got rest. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. I mean, s- dishes for six people every day was a lot. Was and a now lot. in the home you got us, you have a dishwasher, which is Is wonderful. your life changing? It is just wonderful to have a dishwasher. Do you do what grandma does? Do you basically completely wash the dish and then put it in no, there? No, I just rinse it off. Thank I mean, God. If it's, got some, it's got some gooey stuff on it. Of course, I'm going to rinse it off because it probably ain't going to come out. But I've seen people fully wash a dish and then put it in the dishwasher. I'm like, what are you doing? I have seen that before. And I'm like, you just need to rinse it off. You don't. I mean, it's some stuff. You don't have to rinse it. You know, I will put a whole There's, plate with food on a dishwasher. Oh, I'll really? put a can of beans in there. <laughs> yes, nothing's going to happen. I mean, I'm sure something will happen. But well, I, I, I reached out on the Internet and I asked people if they had any questions that they wanted to ask you because I figure, I don't know, you're my mom. It's hard to think of things to ask you because I feel well, like what I, do they have? I already know so much, but um, <laughs> okay, a lot of their, a lot of them are just jokes. Um, did did Trixie always laugh this loudly, or is it a new thing? I think it got more as you it got crazy. Got, got performing more, and just got out there. And as an adult, and you were just like I said, you just put yourself out there more. And I thought you were. I think it made you more relaxed to be who you are. Yeah. So that laugh. I mean, you were you were always a fairly happy. You know. You were a happy kid. You laughed, but no, this big laugh you got now is, um, I think, results of just, you know, being more happier with yourself. You're pretty happy too, though. I think we're very in common. We're very like, we, we always see the we're most optimists. positive. We're optimists. I'm a realist, but I'm also an optimist. I'm like, yeah, this is horrible, but there's always what an can upside. we control? To any situation, there's almost always an upside. And also making the, I'm thinking like, were you ever in Alcoholics Anonymous? I did try it once. 
you know how they have that thing i think the alcoholics talk about it the the courage what is it the some the wisdom to accept what you can't change or whatever yeah yeah something like that their their creed they say i did it because i didn't think i needed but my boyfriend thought i needed so i tried it and it didn't work it wasn't for me it wasn't my thing really yeah how long did you go like a few months were you drinking a lot at the time I didn't think I was. My boyfriend thought I was. Which boyfriend? Rich. Oh, yeah. Really? So, yeah. That's crazy. So I did, you know, I, I just, the people were nice, but it just wasn't, I didn't think I was at that, 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 air, in that, in that, you know, that point. And, and maybe, I honestly, AA. maybe poking your head in and seeing people maybe more advanced on that road. Maybe it did. Maybe take a step back or something, yeah. right? But you know, I always think I love drinking. It, I it's always good to take a break and come back to it because I do think it's easy to let it, a certain things become normal. Right. Oh, I have a drink every night. Oh, I have a drink, uh, three drinks a night. You know, it is good to like step out, step back in. Like, well, yeah, years, like once a year, take off a month. You know, that once, kind of a, once a week, once every two weeks. I'm, I'm gonna fact check that. You can. <laughs> we had cocktails last night, but by, I, 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 got, I got drunk and lost my wallet, so I'm not here to judge anyone. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, we had a few cocktails last night, and we yeah, got people, tired. <laughs> people would be people would be, I think, remiss if I didn't ask. We don't really ever talk about it, but what what did? How do I ask this? Do you ever regret not having my real dad in our life? No, I don't. I don't either. No, I don't. I don't think I, he would uh, uh, add it to your lives. I feel like in movies and TVs, it's always characters who are like, I'm obsessed. I want to meet my real dad. Why don't I know my dad? I want to know my dad. I have never felt like that. You know, I don't think I don't think you guys lost anything. You were fortunate enough to know his sister, who was like my best friend for a long time. And, you know, yeah. you guys, you know, you were fortunate to know her. And she was, you know, she was great. What was that? Because, like? I mean... I'm not telling his business. I'm sure he's out there. I'm sure he's not listening, but he, he had, had drinking problems, problems right? Yes. And, he and he was abusive. Was abusive. Yes. What, how, would you, how did you maintain a relationship with his sister after he was out of the picture? How did you, were you guys just like, can we stay friends and just, his how, how did she was not the one sort who of, told, who told me to leave him? Oh, really? And his sister, your grandparents and his sister, her sister's roommate all showed up at my house one day. To move us all out. Really? Yes. Because even people that close to him were like, it's not good. Right, right. That is crazy. Did I ever tell you when I, that I met him? Once? Yes, yes, yes. And I wasn't wasn't really keen about it, but I thought, well, you know, you have to do what you have to do. You're an adult, and you'll 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 have to make your own choices. And I remember telling you, just be careful, because you can't it was, trust it was when, them. It was when it was well, yeah. my, our auntie Grace, my real dad's sister, who was your best friend. It was when she was passing away in the hospital and was so sad and she was such, she was so, so great. And I really wanted to see her before she died, even though she was like, you know, intubated and everything. Um, but he was sitting there. It was so weird. And you know what was weird? It was all this energy from his side. It felt like he felt so obviously hindsight. I got the sense that he had a lot of clarity about maybe what he's guilty of, right. what he right. could have done better. Right. Right. And I think he wanted sort of, for me to to meet him there and be like it's okay but i'm just sort of like i was in a pretty much one parent home where i was very satisfied with my one parent so like you might have thought of me a lot but like i didn't think of him at all well i still don't think we of him. you know i needed to put the distance between us that's why we all moved up here i needed to put that distance it was unsafe for me not to put that distance yeah. i needed yeah to. So, so that way you moved. That's that's part of why you moved to the country. Yes. Really. So, so he, he didn't know, know where you were either. You were kind of hiding. Well, he knew where I was, but I was two hundred miles away. Wow. Well, over two hundred miles away. So. Uh, Anna Taylor wants to know, uh, Mom, were you a big makeup person when I was a child? I did like to wear a lot of makeup. Yes. You kind of did. I worked in offices. I even when I went out, I liked to wear makeup. Um. So. I remember watching you put makeup on. I mean, you used to watch me, yes. It was magical. I remember watching you put mascara on. It was always like one of the last things. You know, you'd always curl your hair on top with the iron. I remember you holding the yeah. iron. 
and then you would let it cool and then you would kind of brush it straight back. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember you doing your lashes all the time and I remember watching and it was like so glamorous. I mean, putting on makeup is kind of a, a glamorous process, don't you think? Yeah. Because it's like kind of private, but also very showy. The tubes are all shiny. The colors are bright. Right. When you're a kid, it's very magical. Do you ever watch grandma do makeup when you were little? Yes. Yes. And she only wore makeup like for special. She didn't wear a lot of makeup, so... Yeah. She, well, she wore them when she went out, but she put, you could tell when it was special occasions because she'd do the, you know, the do 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 do. The, the fancy, what? The do, the big fancy oh. do. I stuttered there. <laughs> yeah, she'd do. It's, that's the edible. It's the third way of the edible. <laughs> yeah. uh, True Blue wants to know if you ever dropped me. Oh, I'm sure I had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, look at your head. Someone dropped you. Um, when, when did you first see me in drag? When did I first see you in drag? Was it Moving Parts, that tour? Was that the first time? In person? Yeah. Yes. That was the first time in person. Because even when you did the Rocky Horror Picture Show, even There's though I pictures. sold some of your stuff, and I seen, you know, I sold some of your stuff, I seen pictures, I never actually went to the show. Because it was, at that time, things that were going on, like, that's a little much for me. <laughs> It was also midnight in Milwaukee. Right. And I lived up north. And And let's be honest. It's like, I love Rocky. It's like 90% drunk teenagers. Right. I mean. Well, that's when I first seen it. Yeah. (laughs) A woman named Becky is lounging by the pool at the Fountain Blue Hotel when a strapping pool attendant catches her eye. She asks him if he'd like to go on a date with her. But there is a catch. Her husband wants in on the action too. Wandry presents In God We Lust, a story of an alluring sex scandal, power, money, and a very public fall from grace. What begins as an unconventional proposition will soon throw them all into the international spotlight. That's because the couple is none other than Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife Becky, two of the most powerful figures in evangelical America. But as their forbidden fling blossomed into a full-fledged relationship, the Fovels did much more than just break their own rules. While running Liberty University, a school that strictly enforced abstinence, including a rule against prolonged eye contact with the opposite sex, the Fovels lured Giancarlo Granda into a love triangle that lasted years. They promised him the world paying for a new apartment, treating him to lavish vacations, and brokering meetings with the likes of Donald Trump. But when the word of their trapo fell into the wrong hands, it led to a political extortion and international headlines that brought Jerry Falwell Jr.'s empire crashing down. Oh my god, I love this podcast so much. It is so gripping, so suspenseful, so incredible. I gobbled it up with my ears. You should listen. Listen to In God We Lust on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen to new episodes early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. With In God We Lust, feel the scandal. Wondery, feel the story. Dear listeners, it is once again time to continue our ongoing discussion of an incredible brand that will revolutionize your home life. (laughs) <laughs> Jenny Kane, baby. J to the K, and I'm not joking, it's Jenny Kane. <laughs> what is a couch? Huh. To the average simpleton, it's just a place to park your bottom. But to me, when it comes to Jenny Kane, they don't deal in couches or sofas. These are timeless pieces that provide an environment for friendships to be enriched and life to be cherished. Ha <laughs> ha, Jenny Kane! Have I mentioned that cedar candle yet? Ah, that cedar candle. Oh, that little rascal. Oh, I can't even describe what that scent does to my nostrils, my brain, and my life. It turns my little teeny-weeny house into a cathedral of rustic elegance, Jenny Kane! Timeless furniture, darling. Is it the cedar stump or the leather safari chair? Harbor sofa or Pacific bed? Oh, my God, these beautiful investment pieces are built to last how long? Forever. Jenny Kane. Pillows and throws? Huh. 
Spice up your sleepover with linen cashmere alpaca in the best-selling Sonoma collection. <laughs> Ooh, Jenny Kane! These pieces are made with exceptional quality, integrity of design, and classic, timeless, aesthetic excellence. Jenny, 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 I'm in pain. Where are you, Miss Kane? Bring me the furniture. Ha <laughs> ha! Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Get 15% off your first order when you use code BALD at checkout. That's 15% off your first order. J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E dot com. Promo code BALD. Well, we're back. I remember you used to wear heels, though. I remember when you worked at GMAC, which was a car dealership, right? General Motors? It was a finance company for General Motors dealers. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. I remember you would go to work. And you were real spiffy at that time because it was yes. kind of corporate dress. Yes, I ha- it was. What do you mean? It, it was, was corporate dress. You did yes. like the perfume and the hair every day and the makeup. Yes, and I wore dresses. Or you had like suit and, jackets. and Yes, I did. And, and nylons. Yes, and heels. And do you remember the do you remember the high heel incident? When you guys put powdered <laughs> sugar in my shoes. What did you use to put in your shoes for sweat? Baby powder. Yeah, baby powder. And baby one day you said corn starch. And you said, "Why don't you guys do that for?" And we no, said, "No, you guys did it for me to do a favor." You said you were playing a trick on me. Yeah. So you're like, "Oh, mom, I already got we already put powder in your shoes for you." I'm like, "Oh, thank you, guys." And then after I get work, my feet start sweating. I find out it's freaking powdered sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like sticky. Yes, very sticky. Did you get home? And I think you got home and you were like, um, that wasn't powder. I, I think I, you knew right away. Oh, yeah. I knew that you guys uh, <laughs> did it on purpose. We, but we played jokes on each other. We did. I don't know if you remember, but we played jokes sometimes. Yes. A lot of scaring. Our family's big on yeah. scaring yes. kids. What was the most um, difficult part about raising me? Was it the fact that I was in diapers until I was 25? No, you were very, you were actually, I'm sorry. Brian was a very um, easy Easy, easy kid. He wasn't, you weren't difficult at all. Did you ever think maybe there's something wrong with me? Cause I like, I didn't cry. Right. You did when you, you had like colic. Well, your grandpa would feed you peanuts and stuff like that or peanut butter. And you weren't supposed to have that stuff. Why? Huh? Because it bothered your stomach when you were young. Oh, you had a lot of issues ever since you had been born with, um, just, Having a lot of gas. I was like, can I say Great. it? That's what you're afraid to say is that I had gas as a baby. Yeah, a lot of it. So much that I'd be up. No, even night. as a baby, I never farted. Thank you. But no, you were you were you were easy going. You were so easy to um, you know, you weren't real difficult. You did what you were supposed to do. Um, you didn't cry a lot. Um, you and your brother fought, yeah. Plus I was a fabulous student for no reason. You were a very good student. I was lucky that way. The only, I, the only one I had trouble with in school was with Sam. <laughs> yeah. And Dan. Well, Dan got in trouble in school, but he was smart. He like grade wise, I should say. I didn't like, cause like, I didn't have to help you guys a lot with your homework. You guys just knew it. Well, you know what I didn't like about school? I like school, but if I can, if I know it and I can pass the test, why is doing this homework important to you? Because for me, it would be like my tests would all be A's right. and the homework would be a zero because I never did it. And I'm like, well, I know the material. Why yes. is it important to you that I sit home and write it? Like- that was me in high school as well. I could go in, not be in my class, cut school a lot, not be in my class all week, show up on Friday for the test, pass the test, and I'm done. I did the same thing in college. For my electives, I'd show up for the study day, learn the material, and come back the next day and take the test and then be like, see you in a month. I mean, I'm not coming back. Well, right. What's the sense? What is the point? Yeah. So anyway, I was easy to raise. I was perfect. Uh, do you ever get recognized as my mom? No. <laughs> Great. Wait one time. <laughs> really? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, I did that the other night at the at your show when the guy shared the bathroom with me. In line, he knew I was oh, your mom. Oh, that's right. I forget his name. What's the worst thing I ever did growing up? I think I know what it is. I don't. Do you remember when I was into playing with fire for a while? <laughs> Just like a serial killer thing to say. You don't? Okay, then it couldn't have been too bad. No, it wasn't that bad. But I, I, I was really you in. You, you always wanted to mess around with crap. I know. I remember having to yell at you because you were doing it 
And your bedroom wasn't or in the kitchen. No, I was like in my room and I was using Legos and I was taking birthday candles and making like, I think I was using the birthday candles in the Legos for like, like a castle or something. So I was lighting candles with Legos as like part of the build. And my, I remember da- my brother walked in and goes, it smells like matches in here. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Which I mean, living in a flammable trailer from the seventies, you yeah, shouldn't that probably have, wasn't a you good probably idea. shouldn't even have candles in your house. Right, that probably wasn't good. Well, do you remember when we had the fire there? Uh, yes. We were all sleeping. Yes. I, I, th- I think it was an electrical short, wasn't it? It was. I got up in the morning. I heard water running. I'm like, what is that noise? I got up and the went in the kitchen, and the cupboards were all blown open. By the way, no fire, no fire detector. We might have had one. I well, they didn't go off. Right. We're in a trailer. It was just very big, and right. none of us woke up, and it was on fire. And yeah, it was hot enough that it made the can a can under the sink explode, which broke the water pipe, which put the fire out. Yeah. Oh, it, my God. The aerosol exploded, yeah. which broke the water pipe that put out the fire. And it was started by electrical fire. Someone that was crazy. put, like, a nail or a staple through a wire. We could have all died. Yes, we could Easily. Have. We could have, but we didn't. I don't oh, know if we would have died. That seems extreme, but... Well, and, you know... That trailer had multiple exits. Right. It was old. No, multiple exits. Like, it's not like oh, we went yeah, trapped yeah, in. Yeah, we had, like, yeah, several exits. Um, what do you think about me getting fired multiple times? Because I've been fired from, like, four anything. different jobs. I got fired from jobs, too. <laughs> you have? So, yeah. Where'd you get fired from? Not showing up. What job? Taco Bell. No. You were yeah. at Taco Bell? I worked Taco Bell for quite some time. Were you a teenager? Yep. Was it easy? Yep. Was it free food? Yes. But you just didn't show up? Well, my <laughs> job was I was the fryer. That's all I came in and did was I fried all the taco shells, all the tostada shells, all the crisp, and I just put them in covered stainless steel bins and stacked them up. So I, once I got to learn, I knew when I would have to come and go. They didn't put me on a schedule. I just came in and I fried up enough for a day or two. And then I came back in a day or two and did that again. And then I just got sick of it. <laughs> so you stopped going? <laughs> yeah. And they were like, where are you? Yeah, they called me, but I didn't answer. So, you know, you don't show <laughs> up, you get fired. Oh, my God. I think I was 16. Oh, well, that's not bad. Everybody, right. I think everybody should get fired once. It, it's, it's so horrible. Did you feel horrible? No, I, I didn't <laughs> like it anymore. Yeah, never mind then. <laughs> I've been fired so many times and it sucks every time, but well. But you found what you're good at. You know, yeah. that's the thing. When I'm self employed, I can't fire myself. Also, I'm extremely but you could fire yourself and then just rehire yourself. When you first knew I was performing in drag, did you have any reservations? Not no, an not an not Indian really. joke. Huh? Not an Indian joke. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not because it was what you wanted to do. Yeah, you were chill vibes. You didn't care. Did you have regular birth or C-section? C-section. Wow. All four of you. All four. Same cut every time? You and your brother were same cut, and your sisters were same, different, two different, oh, different cuts. Oh, it was like a decade later. Yeah. Wow. Well, the truth is I like spending time with you, and because you live in Milwaukee now, and I have a house here now, we can actually see each other a lot more. That is nice. Because I wasn't nice. seeing you for probably Hardly a, at all. once a year for five years. Yeah. And I, I enjoy seeing you. You're a lot of fun to be around. And, you know, you're my son. I love you. I know, but I'm a little bit of a loner, too. That's why I like... You are. You like to do your own thing. And that's okay, too. Be out on my own thing. You know, because sometimes, too, you know, I don't like them. Um, I love my children dearly. But now I got one that moved back home again. Who wasn't even... was only out for six months. You know, and I always told all my kids, you can always come back home. But... But I don't want you to. <laughs> you can always come back home i just don't want you to well it's okay it's okay you know the youngest is still learning her way so it's okay but well thank you for coming and being on a very special mother's day edition of the podcast the bald and the beautiful did you know it's called the bald and the beautiful i did have you ever heard the podcast no i haven't not yet Uh, you know what something i really like about my mom is she likes what she appreciates it but you're not a stalker. You don't need to see everything I do. And frankly, I, I talk about some pretty rough stuff. You do? I like knowing you're not listening. Yeah. 
No, I don't. I don't watch everything. I do watch stuff. I mean, I and it's sometimes it's just random. You and, know. And when you come to the shows, I always give you a fair warning. Like, hey, there's, it's pretty rough material. But I never done it. I never changed the jokes because I'm like, well, she's here. I'm an adult. Yeah, it's not like I don't know. At some point in life, you have to accept that your mom can handle a dirty joke. And, and your mom, mom has. has you know, when you're young, you think your mom is like a nun and then you grow up and you're like, oh, that person is. No. <laughs> yeah, not a nun. So. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.